Okay, so I'm probably aware I'm the only person in the world that spells his name like this. I hate the spelling of L-U-D-O because all I think of is his face on that stupid board game. And this is more a video of me looking Rudis yeah, through a more like his philosophy and not so much of his powers. Well, a little bit, but not as much. And mostly what he did in the storyline, more how Stigma operated his idea, mostly his ideas and a few more. And this video will go a lot more further than just is his action right or wrong, more so he had to make that decision or he didn't have to. Because it just, because if we're just gonna do good or bad, then this video would just be really short. Similar to Mao and Elizabeth, Rudisio suffers the crystal being the Goss clan, which is basically being overhyped and never had any good opportunity to show it. Rudisio is someone that you can kind of place at the bottom of the top 10, but his spot is just not really guaranteed. I don't know, it's kind of hard. Has he has similar reputation as Mayo, Meloras, Elizabeth, and Meloras. And Rudisio was being snubbed, and him being too arrogant in battles, he still has some good showings, which includes him blowing up the four commandments in seconds. He looked fine compared to Sar and Tarmir against the Indra. He injured the original demon, and it was he injured him so bad that it actually became stronger. And he helped the Sin's tank attack from the Demon King. And aside from that, I don't think the other things he did were that impressive or too memorable in battle. However, he's still alive in this like, st like stupid vessel form, so he could still come back in the sequel and prove himself, but uh, probably not. Okay, so this is probably what makes the character very interesting and probably the most interesting in my eyes. While some people do kind of draw comparison with him from Danzo from Naruto, which I can see a bit why, I'll try to my best to explain Rudisil's perspective, act, ideas, and action through my own perspective. Rudisil acts very different from the rest of the cast. Many people do like write him off as a racist mad person, he's terrible, which is just very simplistic. And that's fine because I'm not here to convince you that Rudisil is a good person because truth be told, he's not. And he's more so a loyal soldier rather than just a plain or a plain bad or good person. Rudisil is a military general and that's actually his position in Stigma X, and he cannot take too many risky decisions because he's responsible for everyone that's under his wing. A lot of decisions comes from him were because of he had to do it because he had to. And here are a few things that I would note that would make Rudisil look like the villain, which includes a bunch of people that kept playing as a demon and he burned out a village. About to kill Monster and Daryl while they're down. Willing to use up their wrestles to keep himself strong. I cannot say that anything he did was good here, but I can see why he did it. The first thing he did was set example so everyone feared stigma and exterminate demon. It was basically like propaganda stuff. And killing the enemy of the opposition to lower the manpower, which is another thing you would do in war. <laughs> and he is an important asset in the war, so his life mattered more than the vessel and most people. No one really knows what made Ruta so like this. It was never really explored, and there were some mentions about his friend dying and him being a way nicer person after being taught no Jusu by Hendrickson. Well, from my point of view, I think what made Rudis so, so focused on winning on the war was that he sacrificed way too much for it. If he could not win the war, what else would he have left? Uh, his friend died, his brother died as well, and other bad things that we are not aware of because it's a war. I think what made Rudis so really change was that he saw someone like his friend, well, he saw his friend in spirit, which is Hendrickson, and learning Mal was still alive restored some hope in him. He was still talking a lot of trash, but it was more so friendly banter. Also, he's not into dudes. Nakaba straight up st states this, and if he was into dudes, why would he have Narabasa as his assistant? It's not like she's com competent or something. And before that, he was very concerned of saving his magic resources and really like thinking of like how to optimize everything. And after that, he was willing to be the first person to walk in front of his teammates to deal with the enemies. One of the most underrated things about Rudisil, and probably one of the things in the series, and because Rudisil is not a character that exists to just oppose or complement our characters, he was just different, he kind of lies outside of the Venn diagram. Maldas and Rudisil does not interact too much, but with how they act as older brothers, it showed that Rudisil made up in a soldier with a lot of blood in his hands, but he did care about his brother, unlike how Meliodas does. Rudisil Eskino was being very cockish, and it was actually pretty funny to watch. And these three were teammates that were not always on the same page. They had no problem problem working together to kill demon civilians, but Dua listens to Elizabeth while Rudisil thinks that she is foolish. Rudisil and Elizabeth are probably one of the most interesting relationships we have in the series, and probably the most. Their relationship and philosophy are so different, but you cannot say that they just oppose each other. From my eyes, I see Elizabeth as a more 
a bit too hopeful and a bit too foolish. And Rudisil as the, I don't necessarily like what I'm doing, but I have no choice. They often have disagreements, and Elizabeth know that her wills is foolish, but she will try her best to make it happen. And a peaceful resolution between the two races would be great, but it's a bit too unrealistic. The demons and goddess has been fighting forever, and you think peace between them is possible? It's it's a bit, it's really, imp like, it's not probable, really. One of the most powerful faction or groups that ever existed, at least in this anime, it has insane powers like Rudus himself, Murdas, Elizabeth, Mayo, Sir, and Tarmio. And aside from them, you still have threats like the Divine Slant Corporals, like Novasta, and other people like Glossinia, Dro, and the four races working together. Yes, I'm aware that the anti-stigma exists, but keep in mind that before the stigma to start a village, they were actually on the stigma side, so it just shows that they had more than just power, they had propaganda. And a lot of people did like the Goddess Clan because they actually did help them with things like like with the druids and while wow, the demons basically just ran around eight souls and that does not look make them look really good well if you haven't realized that the point of this video is to go much more further than the basic is he good or bad yes rudisil has still done a lot of bad things in his lifetime and it should never be forgotten but what stuns me is that some people will sweep certain characters actually under the rug which includes Soldier's Mind killing people so he can be with Gelda, and felt zero remorse for, for any of the victims he murdered, and while Wurzel at least reflected and tried to make sure what he really did in the past. Meldas was, like, really bad. He has done so many bad things and caused so many damage to everything and everyone around him, and I don't think I can explain the things that he did because it's a, it's a very long list. And the tank of is grabbing souls and random civilians to fuel the magic. People often forgot that Sario, Tarmio, and Rudasa worked together to kill the civilians. In fact, Sario and Tarmio were the one who pulled the trigger and were betting on how fast they could murder people. And if your counter-argument was that they listened to him because he's the leader, then why would they work with Elizabeth to save Mosby and Derry? Come on, you already know the answer. And let this panel remind you that they were not as good as you think. Despite the fact that this video is super long, I think there's a lot of things to say about Rudiso. He's the only character that I try to understand for a while and I'm still struggling to really pin down on who he is as a character. In the video in the description below, there's a few different scenarios on how I think that he could change the story with a few different turns. A source of Rudiso could have been a very big twist and was really a thing that kickstarted me to make a really crappy 7 Deadly Sins video, just like this one. He's one of the most unfortunate characters in my eyes, which is another reason why I find him so fascinating. And him being this different also does not really help. Well, I guess in a good way. Especially when trying to have a healthy debate with someone, because he really transcends the good or bad. He is a soldier that would do any and everything to win the war. Winning to him is honor. He is also someone that knows his importance on any team. While he, not, he may not be the strongest person on the teams, he provides so much more than his strength. He is intelligent, not afraid to use the resources, and can plan ahead. Honestly, there's nothing stopping him other than him being like, too arrogant. This is a very weakness for him to have, to be honest, because, I don't know. To me, Rudisa always aims to destroy everything, so having him throwing every single battle is really something. I know I've been praising this character for this entire video, but I would say that there's still some flaws of him. His first debut of, like, around 10 chapters were fantastic. It really showed who he is in a, such a short amount of time, and he wasn't even the, he wasn't even the main character out of focus of it. But after that, he was just a cocky person that talked trash, and then just loses, and, well, it's not really his fault. Well, you can say that for any character, but his character really peaked early and then just kind of declined over time. And he's still alive somewhere if he ever returns. I think it would be nice to have him as a battle or political tactician because he does not need to fight to show his importance. And he already did that in, this, in the Seven Deadly Sins manga anyways. But come on, he probably won't return. Well, maybe he, Sarmu, and Tarmia will just show up at cameos later on. And in the sequel, for next to you. Our Knights of the Apocalypse, hopefully we get to see someone that is political powerful like Rudisil. And Fraudrum was probably the closest one in the Seventh of the Sins, maybe after Rudisil. And having someone show that brain power important decision making can bring an interesting dynamic to the chaos power that is lingering in the sequel.